You're listening to Dr. Karen, Love and Life, right now. I'm Dr. Karen Anderson Abril, psychologist, author, speaker, former professor, professor, and musician. Learn how to have true intimacy. Drag down, knock out fights, and then have like really hot makeup sex, right? I'm all about living authentically and finding the best version of you and living life to its fullest. Don't stop that play button. Get connected. You know, marriage is great, but only if it's a great marriage. You know, fear can't live without thoughts to support it. Got the passion. Channel your path to a more authentic you. Living an authentic life. Listen to Dr. Karen right now on Love & Life. Welcome to Dr. Karen Love and Light. Hi there. I'm Dr. Karen Anderson Abril. I'm a psychologist, author, speaker, former professor, and musician. You might know me from my latest book, Single is the New Black. Don't wear white till it's right. Here on Love and Life, we talk about living and relating authentically in all realms of life. We look at how to have true intimacy in romantic relationships, more meaningful friendships, healthier family connections, more productive and fulfilling careers, and we learn methods for staying happy, hopeful, and positive, all while channeling a path to a more authentic you, living an authentic life. So every week I tell you about being a musician, which is definitely a part of me, and it's something that I haven't focused a whole lot on the podcast. So this week we're going to focus on the music. Those of you who know me know that music has always been a huge part of my life. I come from a very musical family. Uh, My father was a professor at the University of Cincinnati in the College Conservatory of Music for 41 years, and he was also a jazz piano player. My mother's a vocalist. My oldest brother, Warren, is the director of the DeMoss Center for Worship Arts at Judson University, where I went. He's also a bass player, piano player, and also a songwriter and vocalist himself. My brother right above me, Elliot, is a drummer, and so we've done a lot of family bands and projects over the years, and we've collaborated writing for each other's weddings, writing songs. And and so music has always just kind of been this constant in my life, and and even so much so that, and I'm sure you guys can relate to this, that it was such a big part of our family that it was like, well, yeah, that's just how families are. And then you get older and people would be like, your family's really musical. And I'd be like... Yeah, I guess. And and then the older I get, I'm like, oh, yeah, no. So not everybody has a family where everyone plays multiple instruments and writes songs and and so forth. So it's it's something that's been a huge part of me. And when you when you take your career path and you have different interests, you want to make sure that at some point they all kind of gel. And so the podcast is another great way for me to have the many parts of me be authentic and true and expressed and the themes of the show are very consistent with the themes of my songwriting so I wanted to take the opportunity to share that with you and we've been talking about renewing and reclaiming our love and our life and you guys know I'm all about taking charge you know taking charge of your thoughts taking charge of your life I say it every week and and we've talked about recently about how sometimes when we have intense emotions we can get caught ruminating and, and obsessing. And, and we've looked at the research and how that actually doesn't help us at all. In fact, it keeps us stuck and it keeps us depressed rather than helping move us forward. So one of the things I want to look at, and again, to renew and reclaim our life is trying to find the positive in the pain, which is not easy. And I know saying it just sounds so cliche, But what we learn as we get older and experience life, we do learn that oftentimes cliches do have truth to them. And so one of the things I think is really powerful is that when we're taking charge of our thoughts and taking charge of our life and taking charge of our emotions, it's not that we we just forget about them entirely because that would be living inauthentically, right? Because if you have an emotion, it's there and and it's not always wise to just stuff it, stuff it, stuff it. We may need to stuff it for eight hours if we got to get through work. We may need to put it aside for a period of time, but we do need to do something with those painful emotions. And so one of the ways that we can do that, to do something productive and powerful, is to really create something beautiful 
from our pain. And that may seem, again, a bit hokey, but I don't know what else you want to do with it. I mean, we can just wallow in the pain and let it fester and stew and drag us down. Or we can go, you know what? I got to find something beautiful in this. And one of the ways I've done that over the years is to process my pain and process my angst by expressing it through music and songwriting. And it's something I want to share with you now as I think about over the last several episodes, someone who doesn't know me personally, it might be easy to perceive me as little Miss Susie Sunshine, because I'm always like, stay positive, everybody. And and that might feel, for someone who's currently in the midst of, of, of some emotional angst, it might feel that I can't relate to you. And I want to keep it positive, of course. That's very much my message and my mission and my platform. But I also want my listeners to understand that I do get it. I've had some dark, dark seasons. Um, I haven't always been Susie Sunshine. I mean, I'm definitely a positive person by nature, but I've definitely had those times when life has kicked me around a bit and love certainly kicked me around for a while because as you know, I didn't find my true love until later. And so I want to share through my songs a little bit more about the fullness of what I've experienced through love and life and and love in particular. The relationships and the romance is what I've been focusing on, definitely in my book and definitely my writing. You're listening to Dr. Karen Anderson Abril on Love and Life. Go to her website, D-R-K-A-R-I-N dot me. That's www dot D-R, Karen with a K dot me. Have any questions? or would like to share your story with Dr. Karen, email her, karen, K-A-R-I-N, at drkaren.me. So yeah, I'm now a songwriter, and it's not something that I did since birth. I I, I mean, again, I've I've shared that I I was always around music and and in a creative space. My household was very creative. Looking back, I, I see that even more clearly now. And I played around with melodies in my head in high school and that sort of thing. And I wrote a couple songs in college for class projects, which looking back, I think was pretty a pretty cool assignment that the professor would have us write as part of our assignments. I never really started being too prolific with my songwriting until I became inspired. I'm saying that in air quotes. I was inspired by getting my heart broken so often. And I was also inspired when I was madly in love or both. And I want to start with a song called You Made Me. And it's one of my angry girl songs. And I share it first because I want you to know that for those of you who are in that angry phase or you've just had your heart broken or you're in one of these it's complicated situations and you're not happy about it, I want you to know that I have been there and I've felt that. And it's uh, it's one of the many songs I wrote about a guy who I'm going to call Dylan. I want to provide a little context about Dylan and my relationship So I met Dylan a couple months after I called off my wedding. So to, again, contextualize everything, I called off my wedding at 34. I was supposed to get married in May. I called it off in March. And then in the summer, it was a lot of just trying to get my head straight after a four-year relationship, a year-long engagement, and then just really (laughs) talk about reclaiming your life. I was (laughs) renewing and reclaiming my life in a very different direction than I thought I would. And so in the fall, I met this guy, like I said, I'll call him Dylan. It's interesting because looking back, my ex-fiance was pretty much perfect on paper. I'll call him Dave. Dave was smart, successful, had the great job, owned two properties, drove the right car. He was on paper a really ideal catch. And Please know he is a great guy and a great catch. He just wasn't my guy. We just weren't, we weren't that soulmate connection. We didn't have that intense, fiery passion. And, and what I think we're looking for, like I've talked about before, we're looking for that total package. And we didn't have that because I think he looked so perfect on paper and yet I didn't have that heart connection. And so when Dylan came along, I was even more prone to fall for him 
the fireworks and and the the heart you know the zaza zoo I've called it before and I stole that from Sex in the City but I love that term because it just fleshes out that notion of the butterflies and oh I had that for Dylan <laughs> there was lots of zaza zoo and and anyone who knows me knows that I fell hard 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 for Dylan so I met him in the fall so again calling off my wedding in March the wedding was supposed to be May the summer is chaos and it, by fall. I guess I was ready to fall in love again, and I did. And Dylan was not perfect on paper. He was an artist, and he wanted to be a filmmaker, and he was very um, passionate about his work and his art, and yet he wasn't making as many strides as probably he wanted to, and is definitely like in our mid-30s, as I was hoping he would be able to make. And I kind of saw it as I will be his rock. I would be his muse. I would somehow, not that I would, was clearly thinking this at the time, of course, but looking back, I think part of the energy we had was I would be that thing that Dylan needed and then he would be able to launch to the success that he deserved and that he should have based on how talented he was. And again, a little bit more on Dylan. He'd sadly gone through a lot of tragedy in his life. He had lost both of his parents already uh, when I met him, he was 35, and so he'd already lost both parents, which was horribly sad and tragic. And I, again, looking back, I think there was a part of me that thought, I have a strong family, and I have this strength that, that was taken from you based on these tragedies, and, and I'll be able to be that rock. And we we did. We, we fell in love, <laughs> and we just loved each other a lot. To this day, he's a wonderful person. It wasn't meant to go the distance. So when it tanked, I was I was really, really devastated. I was a wreck. So Dylan had always thought about moving to New York, and he actually brought this up to me pretty early in our relationship. We met in the fall, like I said, and then by the Valentine's Day the following year, so we'd only been dating a couple months, he said, hey, you know, it's Valentine's Day, and I think we should talk about the future a little bit. And he's like, I've always wanted to move to New York. It's like I've been in Chicago all these years, and then I meet you, and I've been waiting to meet a girl like you for forever. But I've always wanted to move to New York, and here we are a couple months in, and I don't think I should be talking about moving. And he was had a lot of energy about like where we were headed. And I kind of felt like, hey, we, we're only a couple months in here, and I'm not saying I wouldn't move to New York because I love New York and I've always kind of wanted to live there, but I, I didn't think it was time for us to make any big concrete plans. And also, I didn't really see how New York would help him with his film career. I wasn't sure what the connection was. I, I wanted to see more like a rationale for a move like that. So anyway, getting back to the story, then we just kind of tabled that discussion and then we date for two years and then, <laughs> then Dylan starts talking about how he's moving to New York and I'm not going, <laughs> which was really interesting because I had fallen deeper and deeper in love with Dylan and had started to look for jobs in New York. And I figured, hey, I've always wanted to live in New York anyway. This would be the perfect opportunity. We'll go together. We're just going to be this power couple just forging our way through life through the struggles and I was just ready to settle down I wanted to get married I wanted to be with him and then he starts talking about going it alone like he had to do this on his own and he's like Karen you know you have your PhD you've already done everything you need to do for your career to show yourself what you're made of to show yourself you can do it and I haven't done that yet and as a man I need to do that by myself he was right and in the moment I was furious. I felt, I have built into you for two years. I have loved you. I have supported you. And in my mind, I'm like, heck, you probably wouldn't have even had the courage to go to New York on your own if it hadn't been for me for the last two years. And now I'm getting kicked to the curb. So I was not happy. And I got mad and I wrote a song. <laughs> didn't want to move on. I didn't want to do song. I didn't want to. So you can hear 
where there's a bit of <laughs> edgy anger going on in this song. People always ask songwriters about their process, and every song I've written has had a slightly different process, so I don't think I, I'm one of those people who really has a way that songwriting happens to me every time. This one was bizarre because I literally woke up and hopped out of bed and I just had this, you made me, <laughs> you made me angry right now and you made me sad and you made me feeling defeated. And I was just in this real uh, kind of energy going on. And I sat down at my keyboard in my apartment and I just started singing. Like the melody just kind of came to me and the chords kind of came to me all at once. Sometimes the melody comes and the chords come and then the lyrics come. This kind of evolved right away and all of it was happening simultaneously. And it just came out with this, like, I didn't want to move on. Why are you making me move on? I didn't, I thought I had my husband. I thought I had my happy ever after. And I didn't want to move on, but you made me. So here I go. I'm going to move on. And and I didn't want a new man. I was happy with the one I had, but you made me. And so, as you know, I am a person who believes very strongly that one of the hallmarks of adulthood is to own your choices, own your responses, own your life. And I'm not really a big fan of people pointing the finger and blaming other people all the time. I'm not really a fan of the, the blaming and the, the blame game or that sort of thing. So this was very out of character for me, but it felt really therapeutic in the same way. It felt good to just go, you know what? My life feels like a train wreck and it's all your fault. Hi, I'm Michelle from Valparaiso, Indiana, and I listen to Dr. Karen Love and Life. And then you can see some of the lyrics are pretty typical. Like, I wanted to love you and you forever. I wanted to sing all these love songs together. You're the one who said we were meant to be in the first place. And then I just followed suit. And that's something that I think uh, a lot of women can identify with because women I talk to oftentimes they'll be like, well, he's the one who said I love you first or he's the one who started talking about next year and then he's the one who breaks up with me. You know, I was just following his lead. And that happens sometimes. Sometimes guys get excited and I think in that moment they're very much very real about their feelings. But as we all know, many of us know through the hard knocks that we've experienced that sometimes feelings are very real in one moment and then next week or next month or next year they're not real and or they they change and that's just life and then I think this part of the song makes me laugh verse two I go I didn't want to blame you of course the entire song is blaming so that's just <laughs> kind of funny yeah I didn't want to blame it here I am blaming the entire time but um didn't want to come unglued which I just love that because I know that all of you who have been through heartbreak which is I think all of us by the time we reach adulthood you do feel so unglued you just feel like everything that you've used every strategy every technique that you've employed to just do life just feels like it just unglues and you're just frazzled and you're at wit's end didn't want to make a big scene. Uh, I had some scenes. <laughs> there were some meltdowns. I don't think they were super big, but they were big enough for me. Um, why'd you have to make me scream? And you know, one of the things that w drove me crazy, another one of those examples where he was saying all this stuff, and then I was like, okay, I, I guess I can trust you with my heart. And then to have my heart shattered. Dylan used to say how strong we were. He was like, we're strong. We can make it through this. You know, I'm going to move to New York. And, and then if we're apart for six months or a year, you know, until we get back together, we're strong, we'll make it. So I had to throw that in the song because I had to throw that lyric in because it was like, you know what? You said we were strong. And then you decided that we didn't have what it takes to go the distance. And that hurt. Hi, I'm Vicki Zarley, and I listen to Dr. Karen, Love and Life in Palmdale, California. So I want to leave you with a love and life hack. You know, I've been doing hacks recently and I, I like it because it's, it's kind of reminds me of grad school whenever someone would have a presentation, they'd always have a takeaway message. So I want to leave you with a takeaway message that we're going to call love and life hacks. And the hack for today is take charge of the pain by making something beautiful out of it. Now, in my case, I don't know, You Made Me isn't so beautiful. It's more edgy and a, a bit rocking and uh, that's a good way to go too. 
What I want you to do and to consider is to take charge of the pain by tapping into your creative side to help you process the pain so that in the midst of the disappointment and the anger, the despair that you're feeling, you'll still have something that's yours because through the creative process, you're going to create something that you can own. That's pretty important after being intertwined in a relationship for so long Sometimes it feels really good to get back to you and focus on something that's all about you. And furthermore, you're enhancing a side of yourself that maybe you've been neglecting because relationships take a lot of our time and energy. So by embracing this side of yourself that you haven't been paying a whole lot of attention to, it's a way for you to take the power back. When you take something and you own it and you make it yours, something that was born from disappointment and hurt. When you reflect back on the chapter of your life that inspired the painful creation, you'll be able to see how far you've come. I'm beyond that phase and those emotions. They're not that intense anymore. They're not that raw. As we face then new challenges in our lives and new episodes of pain, we'll remember, hey, last time I was devastated. But I got through it, and I can get through it again. And as a postscript, I want to leave you with a word of hope and remind you what everyone will tell you who's been through a long time in the trenches, the trenches of the dating world. Once you meet the one, you really, truly will understand why all the others didn't work out. And as a bonus, you'll be glad they didn't work out. You can find me at my website, www.drkaren.me, and that's Dr. Karen, D-R-K-A-R-I-N dot me. On Twitter, I'm at Dr. Karen Anderson. Facebook, Dr. Karen Anderson Abril. Instagram, I'm at Dr. Karen, D-R period K-A-R-I-N. And I'd love to hear from you. You can email me your story or ask me a question. I'm at Karen at Dr. Karen dot me, K-A-R-I-N at Dr. Karen, D-R-K-A-R-I-N dot me. Thanks so much for subscribing. I'm on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and SoundCloud at Dr. Karen Love and Life. Check out my website and sign up for my Riff on Relationships. I send out a newsletter about once or twice a month just letting you know what I'm blogging about and what we're covering on the podcast. Please let me know if you have any topics you want me to cover. I want this to be your show as much as it is mine. I also want to give a shout out to my producer, Michelle Musso, and communications manager, Dale Gregory. Take charge of your thoughts. Take charge of your life. This is Dr. Karen Anderson Abril. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, make it a great week.